I've traded with various different prop firms and I can tell you exactly how to get a high number of payouts from one firm. The firm that I actually used this strategy on was True Forex Funds, who unfortunately are no longer around, but we did manage to receive around $90,000 in payouts from True Forex Funds alone, which in my opinion is quite good. And I'm going to talk through exactly how I got these payouts and how I would go about doing the exact same if I was starting prop firm trading from scratch, this is what I would do. So in this video, I have five steps to take you from zero to your first $50,000 with prop firms. And if you are looking for the technical side of it, then be sure to check out the link trading mentorship. Link is down below. I teach every aspect of my strategy from trading plans, data collection, trade breakdowns, confluence overviews, everything is in there. So be sure to check it out down below. But we're going to start with step number one. And I feel like this is one of the most important aspects of this. So if there's one step you're going to listen to is this one. And this is to pick a reliable firm. No one wants to go with a firm that then shuts down when they're waiting for their payout or one that shuts down after months of effort in passing both phases of the challenge. You just don't want that to happen to you, especially if it is your first prop firm. I would definitely say to go for one of the more reliable firms in the industry. I've had it previously with multiple different firms I was funded with, notably True Forex Funds, Funding Talent, My Forex Funds, all the firms that I had funded accounts with that actually shut down. And it's not a great feeling. So I wouldn't want anyone else watching this video to experience the same feeling as when you've taken weeks and weeks out of your time to pass all these challenges to then get nothing for it and they end up closing down and just leaving a complete mess behind. I don't want to see that happen to anyone. So pick a reliable firm. And how do you actually pick a reliable firm? Well, there are kind of three things that you actually want to take into consideration. One of those being time in the industry. And this is very important. With other industries, you could say that a company could be 25 years in the industry, but it doesn't mean they're the best. But in Forex prop firms and the prop firm space, time in the industry shows that they have a good system in place. They have the liquidity to actually pay out the traders. And if they've been going for five years or 10 years, even like some of the firms out there, then it can be quite safe to actually go with one of these firms as long as you stick to their rules. I see a lot of people slating certain firms, but it turns out they just broke the rules. So the firm wasn't actually doing anything wrong. So you need to be careful of that too. And you also want one that is known to pay out. Some firms make it for numerous years, because they're very, very strict, they have hidden rules, and they basically pay out only people that aren't getting massive payouts. So if a firm is consistently denying payouts or rejecting payouts without a valid reason, then you should be quite cautious of using that firm. And the last thing to look for is good reviews. You wouldn't buy a product if it had one star reviews. You wouldn't buy a product if it had three star reviews. So if you're looking for a good prop firm, I'd say four and a half stars or maybe four stars and above, it's pretty good, but make sure you read through the reviews. Make sure they don't look fake. Make sure the one star reviews are, you know, problems that you don't want to personally have. But if the vast majority of people that are leaving one star reviews are having a problem, the same problem, then perhaps it's not best to go with that firm. So once you have picked your firm, you found one that is reliable, what do you do now? Well, you need to create a prop firm specific plan for your trading. Lots of traders say to just trade exactly the same, but I feel like you have to adapt your strategy for prop firms. Let's say for example, you are an intraday trader, you're trading the 15 minute time frame. you're trading over the year, you usually enter three or four trades a week, and looking at your data, you could lose 11 trades in a row. And you obviously go with a prop firm, you know that there's a 10% drawdown limit. So you can't lose more than 10% before that account's gone. So let's say you are taking your trades as normal with 1% risk, like every normal trader does really. It's kind of the generic risk that everyone seems to do. You won't be able to do this because you could potentially then start losing. So there are two ways to go about this. Firstly, you can purchase a challenge and wait until you hit a period of drawdown. A period of drawdown that is your average period of drawdown and that leaves you enough drawdown for your maximum drawdown. So let's put this into perspective. Let's say my strategy, this is a completely hypothetical situation. Let's say my average drawdown is five trades. So my average losing streak, when I do lose, it's five trades in a row. Okay, but then my max drawdown is 11 
trades. So I could lose 11 trades maximum from my three, four years of testing, for example. Let's say I have lost five trades in a row now. I could take the challenge, risking that 1%, knowing that historically, I've only ever lost 11 trades in a row max. So this would be, you know, a one-off situation if I actually lost more than 11 trades in this situation. So by taking the challenge after those five losing trades, half of that drawdown is now already gone because you've already lost those trades on your personal accounts or any other accounts. Worst case scenario, and you go into that 6% drawdown, but then you know that after that, you're most likely and historically going, obviously we can only trade based off of previous data and data we have collected, that you're more likely to then go into profit. But let's see why trading normally and you go into eight, nine trades in drawdown. Again, you're more likely to then purchase a challenge after a losing period because winning periods usually follow losing periods. So if you have the data, you can understand this. Another way to go around it is to just decrease your risk. So let's say you know that you can lose 11 trades and with 1% risk, you can lose 11%. You can go in with half a percent risk. So worst case scenario, you're losing, you know, five and a half percent. 11 are lost, but five and a half percent lost. So you're kind of minimizing the downside. And this obviously will minimize and reduce the, the upside too, but we kind of only focused on the drawdown. We want to pass as many challenges as possible and we want to go into the challenges knowing that if we trade our strategy as normal, the likelihood of me passing this is quite high because I've got the data to show that. I've got the data to show that on average, I can stay within the drawdown parameters. So if you make those few changes, you can then be ready to pass the challenges. And you want to have a setup where once you've made a certain amount of profits on the fundish stage we're talking about now, you cut off your trading, you cut it off. And this does quite nicely bring us onto step three. And this is to focus on small yet consistent payouts. Like I always say, small payouts add up. I've had a lot of payouts that have been 4,000, 5,000. You know, I'll pop a few up on the screen here. I have so many around that four to $6,000 range. And I'll tell you why this is. So when I'm trading with a 200K account, for example, I'll be trading, I'll make two to 3%. And then I'll call it a day and wait for the payout, which as you can see, 2% or 3% is four to $6,000. So that's why the majority of my payouts are four to 6,000. I will have some payouts that are 15,000, 20,000 and that sort of range or $10,000. But this is just because I've had good setups, I've scaled in and that one to three is then turned into one to seven, one to eight, you know, these sorts of scenarios. You know, when you are on a good streak, it is sometimes best to make the most of that good streak. When you're on a losing streak, it's best to minimize your your losses and kind of cut positions. But when you are winning, I don't see the problem with if you have the data, trying to maximize your profits, risking more on winning positions to make the most out of them. I'm completely okay with that because I know that it works from years and years of testing, years and years of data. And as we all know, prop firms are less likely to deny a payout that is 2% of your profit. You won't see people on the leaderboards and people don't get hyped up over 2% or 3% profit, but we all know that these payouts add up. 4K, if you do that every single month for a year, you're making $50,000 or just shy of $50,000. Let's say two months you make 3%, you're then over $50,000 just by making two to 3% per month. And this is just saying with a 200K account. I'm saying 200K because it's a good starting point and people will go 50K, 100K, 200K, and that, that's a completely normal progression that traders make. So if you want to ensure that your payouts don't get denied, firstly, don't break any rules. And secondly, keep the payouts small and maybe they won't notice. <laughs> Moving on to step number four, and this is to get maximum allocation and use scaling plans to maximize your profits, but minimize the percentage you need to make to make the same amount of profit. I put on the screen some mentorship members payouts from the past few weeks. We have traders that have maximum allocation with FTMO and various different prop firms. So if you are looking to get funded and get payout yourself, check it out down below. But maximum allocation means you need to make less R on your trades to make the same return as you would on a smaller account. So 100K account, if you are trading, making, aiming for $5,000 per month, for example, that would be 5%. Whereas if you're trading with a 400K account, you would need a quarter 
of the profits to make the same return. So you would need about 1.25% to make the same return, which I personally think is great. I mean, that's pretty good. You can't really beat that. 1.25% is sustainable long-term. You're making obviously better than S&P 500 on average, but for a trader, if you are able to pass the challenges, then you can make 1.25% per month. And this also means you can risk less. So let's say you are looking to trade and keep your funded accounts, not just get payouts, 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 and then just lose them, pass again. If you're looking to keep and maintain your accounts, this can obviously aid with scaling plans, which we'll go over in a second, but it means let's say you have to make 1.25%, you reduce your risk to 0.5% or 0.25%. So then you're actually making 5R or 0.7R to make the same return, but then your risk is also minimized massively. So it means the likelihood of you ever losing this account is very slim, but you're also still making the same amount of profits on this one account. And prop firms, good prop firms anyway, will reward you for making consistent returns. If you have consistent payouts, consistent returns over a certain amount, most prop firms will scale you up. They'll scale you to 400K or 600K. So it means that 2% can then turn into 8K or 12K, which then means that making 50K can be super, super easy. But if you're ready for scaling plans, you've probably already made your first 50K anyway. And then step number five, this is kind of the last step of this whole system. And this is to diversify. Many traders diversify their prop firms way too early in their journey. The main reason why I think traders shouldn't diversify early is because it just adds so many distractions from your trading that you just shouldn't have. You often see the best traders, they'll trade one account, they'll grow that account, they'll compound it, all their focus will be on that one account. It's the same in business. The most successful business owners have only focused on one business and made all their money from that. Then they diversify. Elon Musk is a great example. He made his money with PayPal. Then he diversified into Tesla, SpaceX, X is in Twitter now, you know, various different ventures after you've already got successful in the first place. So with prop firms, rather than trying to pass five different challenges, manage a funded account, manage a personal account all at once, it can be quite difficult. So if, the, if you're looking for the best way to actually do it, get consistent payouts, get used to the whole process with one reliable firm, then you can diversify. Then you can invest your profits into newer challenges with maybe firms you want to test out, firms that aren't as well established in the industry, but are that, but firms you are comfortable risking a little bit of capital to actually test out. Uh, maybe they have better conditions, better rules, better in trading environment. These are all things that could benefit you and that you could risk your capital on. So if you have learned anything, be sure to like the video and I'll catch you guys in the next one.